I'd like you to say hello to my little motor. Send the copy in the SF50A motor. And uh, this thing should be able to do 60 amps with no problem. Uh, I'm going to drive it today with the Argus. This is my little drive Argus. Um, Copley's made this to run uh, for vehicles. Normally, uh, battery powered systems up to like 48 volts, but there's also a 90 volt version coming out soon, too. You notice the connector on the development kit is very much beefier. Uh, this is like a 10 gauge wire here, so I've got to use unregulated power supply or a battery system just to provide enough volts and amps for this thing. Um, the motor power wires, uh, they're rather large and they did fit into the connector, which is really good. Uh, I have feedback from the motor. This is incremental encoder with halls, but this is a plus drive. So it also takes like the BIS C and other absolute encoders. And this motor should have an option for a BIS C. I got this from the guys at Servo Technica a while back. Uh, they've been using this motor in applications, so it's a, it's a good motor. Um, the development kit. Has, an ease, has a stow on it, so I'm using my stow adapter here so that I can um, bypass the stow. That allows me to enable the drive. So with the stow installed, I can enable the drive. Um, I'm using my RS-232 adapter um, to connect over the serial port. This is a can open version first. The EtherCAT's coming out. Um, this will be in a rugged format too for rugged applications, uh, you know, the standard 810F type application. And there's lots of jumpers and address switches uh, for checking out the system. Uh, you'd, you'd probably want to lay out your own board. And um, the FETs are mounted on the opposite side of this Berkowitz like material. So this is the heat spreader. This would normally be mounted to the frame of your equipment to pull the heat out. Because at 30 amps continuous 60 peak, it's going to generate a little bit of heat, but not very much. It's a copley. So I got this uh, APM series data, the McCopian data, from Luca Nicolai of Servo Technica in Italy. And uh, here's the motor. It's eight pole motor. Inductance, resistance, back EMF, inertia. This is some of the data we need to get this thing set up. Um, nice thing about this is they had provided at one time a sufficient amount of data so that on our web page we could include the data, motor data files. So here's the McCopian files. And you can download these files. This is the incremental encoder with halls, but it's a good way to get started. Just load the file and it's got the encoder resolution and everything in it. We'll take a look at that. And then if you get the cable, you'll have to figure out how to wire it. Um, the encoder cable has incremental encoder, A, A not, B, B not, X, X not, or index, index not. And there's U, V, W, differential. We don't need differential. Single-ended is fine. So just hook up the U, the V, and the W, and don't do anything with the knots. There's a plus five in ground and a shield. Make sure the shield is connected to the frame, earth. Make sure this uh, power supply has a connection to earth close to the drive. Keep the distance as short as possible. This heat plate can also be connected to earth when it's mounted to the frame. So this Argus uh, is new. This is the can open, GPM, P for can open. There's an E for EtherCAT. Um, this data sheet doesn't show the 90 volt version. This is the 55 volt. This is the first one we've come out with. It's for vehicle applications, running on battery supplies usually. 30 amps continuous 60 peak. There's a resolver version. Um, we're gonna do an 090. Uh, that'll get for higher voltages, higher, higher powered systems. Um, there may even be uh, a, a connectorized version of this called the brick, which will um, you maybe have higher voltages too. But you can see it's a plus drive. Some unique features about this is uh, 422 option. That's standard, pretty popular in the rugged industry. 
you got your sine cosines and your incremental encoders and all the absolutes plus resolver you get some io and it's a small package size 3.1 inch by 2.4 by 0.9 inch you know this is 60 amps for one second 30 amps continuous from the connector with the pins you could probably do a lot longer for peak current i don't need it in this application we're just going to spin this motor fast but if you needed 60 amps for two seconds i'm sure we could give it to you you just probably have to solder the the, the module pins into the into the board so that the pins can handle all the current there is a heat sink option i'm not a big fan of a heat sink option uh -huh. fan um, rugged applications don't like to use fans i don't like to use heat sinks i just mount this heat plate right to the frame of the machine and i have an infinite heat sink so the fets are on the opposite side of this heat plate that's a heat spreader that'll pull the heat right out you can use a heat sink and a fan if you want that's fine but I like the frame, and the frame's a good way to get rid of the heat. Uh, the development board, again, um, it's got jumpers on it for uh, inputs and outputs and feedback devices. So if you're using absolute encoders, you'll see the wiring diagrams for that. Just make sure the jumpers are taken care of here, uh, the specific case. So I'm going to use CME2 version 7.1 beta 36 which can talk to the uh, argus gpm or gem and we'll take a quick peek at the basic setup here it's a brushless rotary motor incremental encoder with halls i got it in a can mode buffered output that's fine so there is like a, a multi-mode capability with this this module that's very interesting because that lends itself to um, pulse and direction input, buffered output, or even emulated output. So I downloaded the McCopian data, opened up the file, got some feedback. Let's do encoder loss detection. Um, calculate for initial tuning values. Um, yeah, the inductance is a little higher than the resistance, that's fine. So you can see 25 amps continuous 60 peak, uh, good initial calculated values. So we can double check the uh, the phasing. It's going to do a little manual phasing. You can see the uh, as you go forward, the counts go up, counts going up. Uh, so. This could be the forward direction that it's rotating. You can see the red indicator slightly leads the, the current vector in both directions. Uh, I got a Hall offset here of 150, so there's a wicked lead and a wicked lag. So I used uh, minus 150 for the Hall offset. That's just aligning the encoder and the, um, the Halls for the commutation. So that's good. We got some current loop bandwidth here. Um, these are calculated values based on the data given. Maybe the inductance is a little bit more than the 0.9. 600 hertz of bandwidth, that's okay for slow speed if we want to go faster. Well, we'll need more voltage in, for this motor. Um, today I'm running on 48 volts, but the um, eight pole motor four electrical cycles per second we need to rotate the current vector fast enough um, so we'll take a quick look at the tuning we'll do auto setup checkbox current current loop tuning so we can give it some more gain proportional if it's a little too high again you get some overshoot back it down a little bit no overshoot shoot for the integral as a little bit too much there's a little wind up here you can see the uh, drag drop a little overshoot there set it to 100 that should give us about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth I'm going to do the velocity auto setup checkbox 
Uh, I'm going to take a look at the current actual actual current. And uh, don't go too crazy with the XL and D cell. So this will uh, give us a little more reasonable XL and D cell. Still bangs back and forth here. It's a rocking. So we can take a look at the, uh, yeah, hitting 30 amps already for acceleration. <clears throat> um, the command and actual look pretty good. Uh, we can mess with the gains again, crank up the P to get overshoot, then the integral. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this alone because it looks pretty solid. Skip right to making a auto setup checkbox, make a, a little move. I got some extreme acceleration here. I'm going to go a little bit slower and I'm going to add the current actual current I'm going to add the let's see let's do a single rev from here we'll leave we'll let the control panel open here okay I got like 30 seconds to make this move so here it goes so you heard the bang bang that's the acceleration um, we can take a look it hit 60 amps the power supply drooped down to like 40 volts. It's an unregulated supply with a transformer, a rectifier, and a cap. Uh, the regen wasn't too bad here, but you know, we don't have, there's no big mass attached to this, no large inertia. So that's pretty good. Um, but you can trace the terminal voltage, to see how, how bad your back EMF limit is. And uh, I'm gonna show it going too fast here. So we have to watch out for a voltage limit. Um, so yeah, we're starting to get voltage limited here and the following error builds up. So um, this motor requires a higher voltage. I think it's a 200 volt motor. Um, you can get different windings or you can get a Zenus. Thanks for watching.